The human body is in constant regeneration of its organ and tissues, and this organ regeneration allows for the maintenance of a proper tissue function. One of the organs that undergoes a more extensive rejuvenation is the colon. Within the colon, cells are organized in specialized epithelia called villi, which maximize the surface of interaction with the digested food to facilitate its absorption. Due to this intense activity, cells from the villi are frequently damaged and need to be renewed by cell division. The essence and initial step of cell division is DNA replication. DNA replication starts with the opening of the double helix by DNA helicases. This generates two single-stranded DNA molecules, which are then used as templates for the generation of the complementary strand. However, this process has an inherent risk. If the exposed single-stranded DNA is not duplicated rapidly and persists, it tends to anneal with distant genomic regions from the same or from another chromosome, and to initiate genomic rearrangements such as chromosome translocations. At this point, chromosome rearrangements can lead to the loss of tumor suppressors or gain of cellular oncogenes, which would promote the uncontrolled cellular proliferation that is the basis of cancer. Therefore, something as simple as preventing the exposure of single-stranded DNA becomes essential for preventing cancer onset. Luckily, cells have evolved a very efficient network of proteins that detect and limit the presence of this problem. In cells, single-stranded DNA is rapidly coated by RPA. RPA-coated single-stranded DNA is then able to recruit the ATR kinase and its interacting partner ATRA. RPA also recruits the so-called 911 complex through its binding to the loader RAD17. Finally, 911 is able to recruit a protein called TOP-BP1, which is a direct activator of the kinase activity of ATR. Activated ATR phosphorylates another kinase called CHK1, unleashing its activity. By phosphorylating numerous targets, ATR and CHK1 promote the coating and the replication of the exposed single-stranded DNA molecule, therefore resolving this problem. The double-stranded DNA molecule does not tend to hybridize with distant regions, and it safely contains the genetic information. Interestingly, whereas this pathway is important to protect cells from spontaneous DNA damage, it can also be used against the cancer cells. Cancer cells live with very high levels of replication stress, which is nothing but an increased amount of single-stranded DNA. Since ATR and CHK1 are important to suppress the toxicity of single-stranded DNA, chemical inhibitors of these kinases are potent anti-cancer drugs. The reason is that, whereas they lead to slightly increased levels of single-stranded DNA in normal cells, they generate massive amounts of this molecule in cancer cells. Above a certain threshold, single-stranded DNA ends up being lethal for the cancer cells. In other words, ATR and CHK1 inhibitors are very toxic for cells with high levels of single-stranded DNA, which is the case of several cancer cells. The key is now to identify those tumors with high endogenous levels of single-stranded DNA, since those would be the most sensitive to this chemotherapy. And this is precisely what our lab is focusing on now.